So welcome everyone, my name is Jim Musial. I am uh, filling in for Derek today, who wasn't able to be with us. And uh, welcome to LA2M. I uh, always want to start off by asking, first of all, is there anybody here that's here for their first time today? You could raise your hand if you're here for the first time. Great, great, welcome, we're glad you're here. Uh, we hope you come back. LA2M is, uh, is a great organization, we've got a great program. We're here every Wednesday, just about every Wednesday. We take a few holidays off and weather permitting, we're here. Um, so we're glad you're here. We hope you come back and join us again. Um, we're here for a good treat today. Guys, there's seats up front if anybody's looking here, if you need something. So, a little bit about, uh, for most of you that have been here, you know the program, but for, for the first timers and the new people here, just a reminder of what LA2M is and how we're going to run the program today. Uh, LA2M is a, uh, is a non-profit organization. Uh, we are originally launching our marketing, so we talk about marketing, and you guys know that, and that's why you're here. And uh, so the idea behind this is that we're a nonprofit, and uh, because of that, we do have expenses. We uh, we do a little bit old school and a little bit uh, do things a little differently. We don't charge at the door. It's a free free program for you to come to. But what we do ask is if you're able to, is that you make a little contribution to us. Stacy from Dollar Bill Copying is, is LA Twins Treasurer. She's up here with me. She's got a little bucket that we pass around. Uh, we ask you to put a few bucks in there. We actually ask you if you put a five dollar bill in there, that would be really appreciated. Um, like I said, we do have a lot of expenses. This is a great organization. We put on great programs, and in order to continue that, we need your support. So, um, you know, I know I sit back in the back most weeks, and I see a lot of times this bucket just kind of just be passed along. So please, if you're able to contribute, if you can't, uh, please make sure next week you can. Um, but if you can put a five dollar bill in there, it'd be great. We'll take a ten. We'll take a twenty as well. If, you, if you're feeling generous today, we'd, we'd love that. So please make it around, pass it around, make sure it gets around through the whole room, and we would appreciate that. Um, also, we'll take a quick break here because Stacy has in her hand a T-shirt for our speaker, who I'm yet to introduce, but we're going to get a quick photo op with our speaker, and we give each speaker a T-shirt. Ross probably has ten of them already, but we great. We like to get him a new one because this this shirt uh, was uh, was put on and sponsored by one of our uh, one of our local banks here, Bank of Ann Arbor. So we appreciate their sponsorship. They sponsored the T-shirt. Um, which leads me to the next thing is sponsorship. Uh, because we are a nonprofit, we do use sponsors, and we have a sponsor each month um, for uh, for nominal fee. Um, you can be the, the sponsor for the month. You get to speak each month. Um, you get to uh, be included in our uh, electronic newsletter that goes out to about 1,800 people. Um, so it's well well read. Um, so it's a great opportunity. This month's sponsor for April is the Ride. And uh, most of you have seen that, you know that. If you're in the Ann Arbor and you live or work in this area, you know what the ride is. And Don is in the back here. You probably saw him when he came in. I've got my little button that he's going to tell you about, but Don's going to take a couple minutes here and he's going to share with us uh, about the ride. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Uh, interesting to be sponsoring, talking about a quote when uh, President Obama's in town. But uh, he's here talking about minimum wage and raising minimum wage. And I'll focus on the benefit of jobs. Uh, economic vitality is important to our town. We are all entrepreneurs, uh, employees. We all work in this town or in this area. And public transit is one of the things that helps ensure economic vitality for our communities. And on May 6th, 34 short days, we're asking everybody to come out and vote however you'd like. Um, we can't tell you how to vote, but we can tell you and educate you on what we're offering. Um, we're increasing transit, uh, increasing the benefit of, of transit by increasing the frequency, later weeknights, weekdays, uh, destinations, more, more served throughout the area, uh, and most importantly, 90,000 hours more in service. Uh, that's a 44% increase, and all we're asking is that you come out and vote on May 6th, and you can go to the rideyourway.org, because this plan is called the Ride Your Way, because this is all based on community feedback. We've taken it in, we've planned the service based on what people have been asking for, and we're ready to deliver it as soon as August, if this passes in May. So please come out and vote on May 6th, and thanks for your support. There's info in the back, and again, it's the rideyourway.org. What streets are closed today? You know, wow. <laughs> I hear at one o'clock when everybody leaves, I hear they're closing South Main by Hoover. South Main and Hoover. And Hoover and this whole, we're in a really strange area. We're getting home is going to be very interesting. We're back to work is going to be very interesting. So let's stay here and drink. Yeah! <laughs> I hadn't decided whether he was taking a helicopter or a motorcade. Yeah. 
Yeah, they, this was actually, this was posted on Twitter. Okay, so welcome to LA2M, now Obama Care. You can ask you the crowd, we got the cool crowd here. So, thanks Don for, uh, for your sponsorship and for the right sponsorship. Um, as he said, there is in the back, and we've started something new, we have a little sponsor table in the back. So, sponsors are able to put something out there. We have our information for LA2M. Um, if you are interested in being a sponsor, there's a little sponsor card back there. Uh, so please take one if you or your company would be interested in that. There's some information there. Fill it out and get it back to us. We appreciate that. Also, in your opportunities as you're out and about, since so many of us go to different events and network, we also have these little LA2M cards. And they're on the back table too. So if you'd like to share about LA2M, if, you, if you're, if you're, you know. You had a positive experience here. You like coming, you know, I look around the room, you guys know me, I know a lot of you, got to know a lot of you. Um, you build great friendships and relationships here. And if you'd like to share that with some of your colleagues and some of the people that you know would benefit by King Valley, then please take one of those cards and keep it with you. You know, when you hand out your business card, people talk about where you go and what you do. This is a great organization to share, so we hope you'll do that as well. So, enough about LA2M, we're ready to start the program. Um, for the first time, is what we're gonna do, we have a speaker, whom we're about to introduce, but he'll speak for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to allow for a few minutes for question and answers, and then you're going to have the opportunity to uh, introduce yourself, because we'll pass the mic, we'll get all the way around the room, and then we will be out of here by 1 p.m. today. So, so we're really happy to have uh, Ross here speaking. Ross Johnson is, uh, is with 3.7 Designs, uh, and aside from being a phenomenal designer, uh, he's also uh, one of the founding members of LA2M, so he's been here for a long time. And, uh, and he's also just a good guy, and we like to have good guys here. So, Ross has a lot to talk about today. He's got a lot to share. Uh, he's going to talk about WordPress. A lot of us know about WordPress. A lot of us do work with, with the web, and we're familiar with that in our job role. So, we're going to hear some really great information. So, if we can put our hands together and welcome Ross today. Just to have a I like, there's a site called Watch You See. It's a website dedicated to watches, and I go on it like three or four times a day. And it drives my wife crazy. It's like anytime she looks over, I'm looking at watches. And that's what's cool about the internet, right? It's like whatever weird thing you're into or whatever hobby you have, there's like people who want to talk about it all the time. Like at any given moment, there's somebody talking about a watch, and I want to read about it. And that's why I like websites. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming out. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about WordPress today. I'm going to talk about open source today. And my goal is um, for you to have a few takeaways. One, is to have a better understanding of WordPress so that if you're using WordPress, you know its full capabilities. Or if you're considering some sort of platform to build your website on, um, you'd consider WordPress if it's the right solution. I'm not going to say it's the right solution in every situation. But then also just a better understanding of open source software and why you might want to consider any open source solution and what open source software has done um, for everybody in here, whether you realize it or not. So I'll talk a little bit about those two things. Um, but first, you know, I'll do kind of the formal thing where I'll tell you a little bit about myself, um, just so you know who I am. I technically call myself a web strategist, which I don't really know what that means. It means I do a lot of different things, um, from design to trying to plan, you know, what's the best way to use your website, your online strategy, uh, for a company called 3.7 Designs, which I started in about 2005 when I was still in college because I wanted to make extra beer, I mean book money. Um, and by the time I was ready to graduate, I didn't want a real job, quote unquote. So I decided to get a job that took much more time, was much more frustrating, which was running my own company. Um, about a year ago, I was demoted. I used to be CEO, um, but my wife, who is also a designer and a local entrepreneur, and I um, ended up merging companies. And as things go, I got kicked down to web strategy, so I'm no longer CEO. Thanks, honey. <laughs> Um, I've been using WordPress for a long time, since 2006, um, and while I'm bringing up WordPress, just to get an idea of kind of everybody's experience, how many people here um, have used WordPress before, in one form or another? How many people have a site running WordPress right now? <laughs> well, how many people design or develop for WordPress? How many people contribute to the WordPress core? One, WordPress it, two, you contribute to the core. No? How many of you are lying? <laughs> Two, okay, cool. Um, 
So yeah, WordPress, is, it's a great tool for um, powering your website, and uh, it's also a great tool just to run a company around. There's a lot of companies in town um, that either provide WordPress services, um, like the company that I used to run, um, but there's also a lot of companies in town who actually make a living um, producing products or services or plugins or premium add-ons for WordPress. Uh, which is just uh, something that I recently ventured into uh, a couple weeks ago. I released a premium plugin for WordPress called Project Panorama, uh, which is basically a way to communicate project progress with your clients. Um, it was a need that we had internally, so I built a tool for it, realized that other people might have an interest too, and released it, and am now selling it. Um, and I love WordPress. I really do love WordPress. It's weird because it's like a piece of software, but I use it every day and you know, I do a lot of things with WordPress. We run a local WordPress meetup. I help with um, WordCamp Detroit in Ann Arbor, which is kind of like a once a year big gathering conference about WordPress. I help people with WordPress for free just because it's helped me so much and I've never had to pay for it that I feel like I need to give back. And that's one of the reasons why I want to talk about WordPress and open software today. Um, but I grew up in Ann Arbor, and I kind of feel like I was given a unique perspective on life because my parents kind of had very two different jobs or two different roles. Um, my mom was a social worker, and she's now retired, she's still alive, that's why I say was, she was retired. Um, and she really didn't have to work, uh, but it was something that she wanted to do, and she wanted to help people. And, you know, the pay for social work is really lousy, and the only place that she could get a job doing social work was in some really bad areas of Detroit. And even though it was really stressful and at times you know, her life was even threatened, she wanted to help people out. She didn't really care about the money. It was about some bigger, more altruistic goal. On the other side, my dad currently is um, and was an architect and a business owner, uh, which is kind of a very different sort of thing to do every day compared to social work. Um, we have on one side my mom, who's kind of you know like the care bear, like, oh, we all love each other, this is great. Um, I'm in a good situation, I'm gonna help people who aren't in a good situation. The other side we've got kind of my dad, who's the Gordon Gecko, you know, like, well, if you work hard, you can make a lot of money, and that's cool. Um, so I, I, it's funny, I always wanted to help people, but I also always wanted to run my own business, and uh, it's strange how that impacts the decisions you make later in life. Um, and one thing that I remember my mom telling me is, you know, she came home one day from a really, stressful day at work in which she met um, some clients that she was working with uh, at their apartment. I guess you know, at certain times she'd go into the home and see how things were with their kids. And she found this, this particular person furiously scrambling to try and pack up her car with things. And it turns out that she had, this client had borrowed some money from a loan shark and didn't have the money to pay it back. And um, the loan shark supposedly was on their way to try and collect and or do harm. And, you know, obviously this client was at risk, obviously my mom was at risk being there, and she decided to try and help these people pack up their things into the car and get away before the loan shark got there, which apparently never did. Um, and that's something that really kind of stuck with me, you know, making that decision to put somebody else's needs before yours. And oddly enough, that's one of the reasons why I really like WordPress. Um, but you know, despite growing up in you know a fairly a, you know a nice situation where you know my, my dad was successful and we had you know no problems making ends meet, um, they didn't give me a lot of money for myself. Like I didn't get much of an allowance. You know, I had nice things, but it was always like when they decided to give me nice things. Um, and because of that, there were certain things that you know a lot of people you know if they had an allowance they could they could do like go online, which I really wanted to do really badly because I was into computers. You know, I love computers, I love computer games. And especially when I was like in high school, um, there's this one particular game called Quake, which I really wanted to play online. It was a first person shooter, it was like the best one at the time. There's like a multiplayer version where you could play with other people. Stuff that's really easy to do now, but back in like 1996 was like really groundbreaking. Um, and so I wanted to go online so badly that I used my lunch money that my parents gave me to pay for part of my friend's AOL account so I could use it when, when he wasn't using it, which um, ultimately meant that I could only go online super late at night and on the weekends. Um, and because I wanted to play uh, this online video game so much, called Quake, this is what it looked like. Did anybody here play Quake? 
So you remember how awesome it was. It was good. I know it looks horrible now. Like you could play this on your iPhone. But at the time, this was amazing. This was like realistic to me. Like I thought I was in the game. Um, but I could never actually play it because AOL was too slow. Like I couldn't play online because AOL was, was like really slow. I could only like get on at like midnight on the weekends and like not many people were playing in that period of time. Um, but what I found was this is one of the first games where people could create add-ons. Like if you had some idea for Quake and you wanted to make it better, you could create an add-on, post it online, other people could then download it and install it. And one of the things that people did was they created what are called bots which is pretend play online. There's a computer controlled players and they put you in the deathmatch mode where you're all trying to kill each other and those guys would run around and grab weapons and try to shoot you. As you can imagine, they weren't very smart because this was 1996 and there were, people were doing this as a hobby. It's not like they invested a lot of time and effort in artificial intelligence. But for me, that was like close enough. That was really exciting. When I got home from school, I could play with the bots and pretend like I was actually playing with other people. Which now in hindsight sounds really sad. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of a happy ending. Um, because I, I thought that the bots weren't real enough. You know, they, it didn't feel like playing with other people um, to the extent that I wanted it to. Because if I went over to my friend's house, we could get online and play there, it just it felt a lot different. Um, and luckily, all these bots and these add-ons were released as what's called open source, meaning that I could just download the source code of you know, these people's add-ons and change it and modify it however I wanted. I was allowed to do that. That wasn't against the law. law. So I taught myself C, um, which is a programming language. It was one of the first sophisticated programming languages that I learned. And uh, I created my own version. I called it the RBOT for Ross. And I tried to make it much more realistic as far as like what people decided to do. And when I, that turned out to be too hard, I just added a whole bunch of weird weapons, um, which was cool. And at that point, I uploaded it online. I'm curious what you think. So I've got the two parents, you know, the give away for free and like, well, why don't we make some money? Um, any guesses? Did I sell it or open source it? Source. Source it? Yeah, I open sourced it. <laughs> Um, I was hoping to have water at this point, but I don't have any water, I'm really thirsty. So I'll just take a mental break. <laughs> ah, thank you. I'll give you two cents. Thank you. Is that open source water? <laughs> um, I don't know if water can be open source, but we should look into that. All right. So let's, uh, let's talk about something worthwhile. Um, how many of you would say that your website is a critical part of your marketing strategy? It looks like most of you. Um, if your website's really important to your, to your marketing strategy, I think it's, it's kind of important to really understand kind of the underworkings of the web and then you know, make a decision about what platform you want to use um, knowing these sort of things. And I'm going to talk a bit about open source because I don't think it gets enough discussion because the web by itself, the web as a whole is actually very open source. And uh, you know, most, the, the web in general wouldn't be what it is today without open source. Uh, it was kind of built on a lot of open source roots. And just to define it really qu quickly, um, open source is basically just a computer program where the source code is actually available to the general public for free, meaning nobody owns it. It means that anybody who wants to can download it without having to pay anything. You can modify it however you want, and you can distribute it however you want, including you could sell it. I mean, you could download any open source application, change one line of code, and sell it for however much you want, and that is completely legal. But surprisingly enough, even though it seems like there's no real reason to do anything open source because you're basically putting a lot of effort into something you don't really get much of a return on, at least it might seem on the surface, um, the web itself is very open source. In fact, a lot of times when you're visiting a website, some of you might be using nothing but open source technology. I mean, you might be run visiting a site that's powered by a Linux server which is an open source operating system, or a Unix server, which is an open source operating system. Uh, which is actually funny because Mac OS is built on Linux, um, which is an open source operating system that they then charge you for. Hmm, I figure. 
Um, it might be running on an Apache web server, which Apache is an open source piece of software. It might be using MySQL, which is a database software, which is also open source. It might be using WordPress, which we're talking about today, also open source. And you might be browsing on Firefox, also open source. So you can see, um, you know, a lot of these technologies that exist power entire websites. They allow you to not only you know, access the server that's hosting the website, but to actually serving you the website. The platform running it is open source. The data that's being stored is stored in an open source database, and you're viewing it on an open source browser. Everything ends up being open source. So if this is working, there's got to be something to it, right? We have these amazing websites that can do unbelievable things, especially if you've been on the web as long as I have. You know, back in 1994, before Yahoo had a search engine, um, and you can see this huge difference between that point now and you know, how websites are today. So we're talking about WordPress today because open source exists. That's why WordPress is here. And even more so than a lot of other open source software where you know, somebody created it from the beginning with the idea that, that uh, it should be open source or will be open source. Because uh, WordPress has kind of an interesting history. In 2001, there was a French developer by the name of, I'm going to probably butcher this, Miguel Baldry? Um, and he developed a, a platform called B2 Cafe Log, or how he pronounced it, um, B2 Cafe Log, because he was French, um, which is a PHP based blogging platform. And he released it as open source. So uh, it was basically a way to make blogging easier because before tools like B2 or B2, um, Hosting an online diary was really difficult. It was a it was a huge pain, and I did this in high school. And I've gone back and re read some of my old blog posts, which are really embarrassing. Um, but it was a lot of work. If you wanted one new page, that means you had to open up your text editor because there weren't very good web authoring tools. You had to create a whole new page from scratch. You'd have to upload it. You'd have to go to every other page you've created before and link it so that you could actually find it. Um, the new FTP program put all back online. So creating one small update took a lot of work. If you wanted to change like the look of the site, you had to go through every single page and edit them um, from scratch because your information, your content, was stored in the same place as your actual template files. It was just one thing. Um, so he released a tool where you could actually log in. You didn't have to know HTML. You didn't have to know anything special. As long as it's installed on your web server, you could just type in whatever you want, hit post. It did everything else for you. Um, <laughs> this is referring to the effort it took to update it before um, V2, um, which did suck. It was a lot of work. But, so he created this, this tool that kind of looked like this that made it a lot easier. Um, you can imagine that this will be a lot easier to work with than code, writing code from scratch. And uh, it took a lot less effort because it automated a lot of things. And that was going really well. You know, he released it open source. You know, a lot of people were using it and suggesting ideas. I think there was a group of people who actually contributed to it. Um, and then in 2003, something happened. Uh, the developer kind of disappeared. He went off the face of the earth. And there's a couple posts on his website saying, like, hey, has anybody seen him? We're worried. Um, updates to the software stopped happening. And you know, the web moves fast. So people started to lose interest. Now, if uh, if B2 wasn't released as open source, that would be the end. That'd be the end of the story. You know, somebody stops updating a piece of proprietary software, sooner or later it dies. That's it. You know, unless somebody else decides to buy it out, which you know, doesn't happen all that often, um, that's it. That's the end of it. But it was released on open source, as open source, which means that nobody owns it, which means that anybody could decide, hey, this has got some potential. Um, why don't we do something with this rather than just let it sit here and die? And so that's what a young developer by the name of Matt Mullenweg and uh, another developer I think was based in the UK named uh, Matt Little decided to do. They decided that they could take over this platform and continue what was so great about it and build something bigger and better. So they forked Beta 2 or V2, which I'm sure is not dirty. It's a term for open source software where you take an existing code base and you decide you're going to make your own. So it's kind of like prong to fork, you know? You're in the middle prong, you move one to the right, to the left. And they called it WordPress. And it looked pretty much about the same. Um, same general things, you could put in a title, an excerpt, a post, you could format it kind of however you wanted, and then you could publish it. So WordPress started as a blogging platform. And I think that's still what it's probably most known for. 
And originally, that's pretty much all it was good for. If you had a website that uh, you wanted to post content where the date of that content was what was most important, where you wanted to organize that content by date in reverse chronological order, meaning the most recent post showed up at the top and every other post showed up below it, then WordPress was awesome for that. It did a great job. Because that's what it was built to do. It was built to put content on a page in reverse chronological order, which is essentially what blogging is. It's just creating content um, that's time-based. More than anything else, you have categories and tags and stuff like that. Um, and because that's all it was built for, you know, people use it for that. And for quite a few years, um, that's really all they focused on. And I think because of that, we're in a situation now where um, people kind of assume that WordPress is just a blogging platform, that it never evolved past that, that it's not a great tool if you need something for your enterprise, if you're trying to build a web application, um, you need something more powerful. And these days that's just not true because WordPress did evolve. It evolved significantly. It's evolved more rapid than I've seen pretty much any other platform evolve. And I think it's because of the big community. Um, but let's take a look at that evolution a little bit. So it was released in 2003, 2004, 2005. Um, they created the ability to have plugins. So this is like those Quake add-ons that I was creating. We could actually add in additional pieces of functionality um, to your WordPress site. You know, small little bits of things that could be like, hey, maybe the comments look different. You could subscribe to comments to very big things like it could behave completely different than a blog altogether. But it started small. Um, the ability to have static pages. So before 2004 in WordPress, you couldn't create just a page. Everything had to be a post which meant if you create another post, it would always push that previous post down. Um, so that was a pretty major advancement. And then the ability to have themes. So they had a whole theming engine that actually made it easier to have WordPress sites that look different to one another. Uh, in 2006, that's when I started using it. Clearly a major milestone. <laughs> I thought that it was really good for a blog, because I was using Blogger before, and it was really kind of clunky, I didn't like it. Um, but I remember thinking, this is awesome, but this is totally not ready to be in CMS, uh, which means content management system, or a piece of software used to design to, um, to power an entire website. Uh, in 2007 to 2009, they added a lot of really cool things, like the ability to tag content, um, pretty URLs, which is like, you know, slash, instead of uh, a variable like p equals 45, like, you know, ross.com slash p equals 45, you could have ross.com slash about. So this really helped for search engines. It made WordPress a lot more user friendly. Um, there's a lot of great things about that. And then they really kind of advanced the plugin and theme management at that point too. But it wasn't until 2010 that I think there was really a turning point um, when it comes to WordPress and its capabilities. And that's when they released version 3.0. <coughs> I would say before version 3.0, and we're on like 3.8, about to be 3.9 now, I would, I would call WordPress a blogging platform that you could use to power a website if you really wanted it to. There was a lot of people who kind of forced WordPress to be more of a content management system by manipulating things like, you know, if you wanted products, you created a whole lot of pages with product information or a whole lot of posts. But it wasn't really great for a content management system because it was still a blogging platform. Um, but after 3.0, I would say WordPress, that's really when it became a content management system. A tool that you can use to power a wide range of different types of websites. And even a tool that you could use to power or create web applications. So something that's more than just displaying content or serving content to its users. Because 3.0 introduced a couple of really important things. One of the most important being custom post types and taxonomies, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, it also allowed easier management of menus. So if you wanted a more sophisticated navigation or information architecture or menu structure, WordPress added those features in to make those things easy. And then it also built in multi-site capabilities. I mean, if you have multiple different WordPress sites, rather than having a different installation of WordPress for each one, you can have one installation with a super user account that can then manage each one separately. They can live on different domains or subdomains in different directories. You would never know that it's actually one installation of WordPress. Um, so it really simplifies things and also extends the capabilities of what you can use. Um, but just to clarify, 
The definition of a content management system is a system used to manage the content of a website, which I'd say, simply put, is just a way you can update your own site without having to know code, uh, which is really useful for a lot of people. Like, you know, I, I learned HTML and taught myself PHP, but I completely respect the fact that not everybody needs to know that. Because um, there's a lot of other things that you're probably experts in. There's no sense in having to learn these things just to manage your own web presence. But the key thing that happened in 3.0 was these custom post types. And what custom post types are, are basically a way to designate certain different types of content that will appear on your website. Before 3.0, you basically could have two different types of content. Posts, which are is content that somehow has a date-driven um, relevance to it, and then pages, which is just a static page of content that's just text, text on a page, nothing more complicated than that. And with a custom post type, you can create content of any kind, um, meaning if you're a company like, hey, Arbor Brewing, maybe you don't just have posts and pages, but you also have beers, because you, that's your business, right? You manufacture, or you brew beers, you sell beers, and your beers probably need to have different information different structured type of data associated with them that a normal page of text um, isn't suitable for. They might have different relationships or different groupings um, based on the data. For example, if you're really into microbrews, you probably care about what's the body like. Is it very heavy? Is it medium body? Is it light body? You might care about the styles and the IPAs and the porter. Um, if you're really geeky about it, you might want to know the IBU, which I think is like some like bitterness value. Um, the original gravity, these sorts of things. So these are like, these are ways that you can organize, organize the beers, but there's ways that you can look at the beers, there's it's data associated with the beer that you couldn't just handle by having a page of text. It's too limiting. I'll go over some examples in a bit. Or maybe something a little more simple would be if you're a realtor. You don't want just pages, but you want to have houses or properties. And those properties have a common set um, data set associated with them, meaning you might want to describe how many square feet they are, how many bedrooms they have, um, how many baths, what's the location. Um, you could type this out mainly on every page, but it makes it much harder to actually do a search by location or a search by how many square feet. Um, or look at a listing of all the four bedroom, two bath houses on your website. So if we go back to Arbor Brewing, um, you know, they might have a page of content that looks like this. You know, there's a title, there's a whole bunch of text, and that's about all a single page of content really needs to do. But as soon as you start looking at the beers, you probably need something a little bit more complex, right? There's data that you want to show, like where is it available? What's its stats? What's its flavor? When's, when is it available? What time of year? And this is what post, custom post types really allow you to do with WordPress. You can create custom types of content that all have a unique data set um, you can fill out for each individual content piece and then choose to display it or organize it or search by it in a variety of different ways. For example, with beer, you might want to have a beer search, which is what we created here. Um, the top is kind of cut off, but this is basically a way where we can search through all the different custom post types, or all the different beer post types by location, because we have that associated with that post type um, with the availability, if it's currently available or not currently available, or by the style, if you're looking for a certain style of beer. The same can be true of houses. So this is a premium theme for WordPress called uh, Asian Press. And I think it's, it's fairly inexpensive, I want to say it's like 45 bucks or something like that. Um, but what they do is they have a custom post type of the property. And under that, they've got some structured data like price, address, city, state, zip, um, that sort of thing. So not only when you type in that information, does it come out formatted nice like this, but it also allows you to do a search by those important things. Um, they've got kind of the search field or search property search on the home page where you can check the status, what type of location is it, um, the number of bedrooms, the price, and the locations. And this is really kind of extended what WordPress can do. Uh, so a couple other examples, if, if you're a building company, maybe instead of having you know, properties or beers, you have projects where your projects have a specific data set you want to fill in information for. Um, in which case, that might be what's the market, what's the location, who's the owner, who's the engineer or architect who worked on it, 
Um, what are some of the different accolades that this particular project won? And then what this allows you to do is then potentially click on any one of these things and see all the other pieces of content that share that same uh, association. So show me all the projects in Michigan or show me all the projects that are university focused. I've seen this kind of played out in a lot of different ways. So some examples just kind of get your mind going. Uh, I've seen people use it to show projects, like if you're a design company, um, a lot of designers will have like a portfolio of projects, uh, clients. If you want to show all the different clients you have, or case studies, um, locations, if you have physical stores, team members, if you want to have specific information about your team that can be searched for, displayed in a certain way, um, products, testimonials, services, issues, magazines, that sort of thing. So what this has really done is, is allowed WordPress to create a lot more complex websites. In fact, there's very few situations now where somebody describes something to me and I think, yeah, WordPress couldn't do that. Now, WordPress won't always be the best solution for it, but most of the time it is possible in one way or the other. Um, and the other piece of this is custom taxonomies, uh, which is basically just a way to create your own type of category. So like if we go back to the beer example, a custom taxonomy might be beer style. So you can create your own categories within beer style, associate whatever pages of content or whatever beers you want into that style, and then you know, show people a listing of those styles accordingly. Um, but not only has this allowed uh, people to use WordPress to create these more complex websites, it also allows, has allowed people to kind of create a step beyond websites and actually move into web applications. I mean, the, the reason the web website exists isn't necessarily to show people content, uh, like what type of beers there are, but it allows people to actually do something. Um, there's some actual functionality there that serves kind of a greater purpose. Uh, for example, there's a project that we worked on um, for a company here in town that does um, kind of like personality surveys for large organizations. So if you're a really large organization, like Shell Oil, for example, and you have these really big teams, you want to see what's the ideal group of people to put in different teams based on their personality, their strengths and weaknesses, you would hire them. They would fill out a 20 question survey and they would do personality profiles to match them together um, in the most effective teams. And what they were doing before is this was all done manually, meaning somebody would get a piece of paper and fill out this 20 question survey, they'd fax or mail it in, at which point somebody at the company who provides this service would then look at it and manually punch in each individual number into a computer program that they had and then submit an order which would fire off a script and create a bunch of Word documents. Which is a lot of work for just like filling in 20 questions. Like as soon as postage is involved um, to get a piece of paper to somewhere, I, I feel like technology, we're at a point where technology can solve that, right? And so using WordPress we built a solution. It was really simple. We just put that uh, 20 question survey online WordPress already has a lot of the functionality that they needed built in, like the ability to have users, the ability to have logins, the ability to create forms, the ability to store and retrieve data. So we didn't have to recreate those things. Um, so they put in those that the survey questions. Um, it got stored in the database within WordPress. And then internally, they had the ability to then create orders, where they could look up in each individual survey, associate with an order, and then generate the reports, which would automatically talk to the other location. Um, so that was one way that WordPress was used to actually power a web application. Uh, another example, I love this. There was a company, I think they're mostly distributed. They're most, one of the most well-known WordPress companies called Web Dev Studios. And I think they just wanted to prove that you could like power a mobile app with WordPress, so they created IP Freely, which is a way to like track the various different places that you could pee and the quality of the I don't, bathrooms, I guess. Um, and even though it was built uh, as an iOS app, a lot of the underlying functionality actually talked to WordPress. So when you created a user account on IP Freely, it actually would register an account on WordPress. When you went to log in, it would talk to WordPress and say, is this person actually a user? And if so, it would then connect you to the place. And then when you went to store the location or some, some content, it would actually talk to WordPress and say, hey, we need to store some data about this location. This guy's peeing and he likes it. Um, so I thought that was cool. <laughs> it's no longer available, unfortunately. I would use it. Um, that goes with the beer application. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> both of them. Or Tom's happy hour. <laughs> um, 
So since 2003, WordPress has experienced massive adoption. Um, in fact, today, 22% of the web is powered by WordPress. 22%. And last year it was like 17, so it's growing really, really quickly. And out of all the websites that we know that are running a content system, content management system that we know about, I mean, it's not some homebrewed thing that we just don't know what it is, WordPress powers 60% of them. The next closest is at like two to three percent. So it's it's hugely the the market. It covers most of the market share. And at this point, um, that's 77 million websites are running WordPress. 77 million. 22 percent of the web. So there must be a reason, right? Why is WordPress so popular? Well, I would say it's largely due to open source software and uh, usability. The WordPress, from the beginning, was always built with the idea of ease of use in mind. It's built more for users than developers. And that's the reason we first started using as a content management system. So we tried a whole bunch of other different things. Uh, tax pattern, we tried Silverstripe, I tried playing around with Drupal, we looked into Joomla. But what we found is like, yeah, we can build these really complex, nice, cool websites. But as soon as we hand them over to our clients, who then have to take them over from there and actually manage and edit their content, um, they didn't want to do it because the learning curve was too high, which completely defeats the purpose of a content management system, right? Like, if you can't edit your own content, why even have one? Like, if you're going to pay us, just let us build it in scratch. Um, it'd be a lot easier. So I'll do uh, a quick demo to kind of show you. <coughs> one of the ways it makes it easy. Okay. Uh, so here's our Arbor Brewing site. And I am logged into WordPress. And uh, one of the things is when you're logging into WordPress, you kind of get this bar up here at the top, which makes it really easy to edit content. So I'll just go to one of these beers. This is a staging site, it's not the real one, so I'm not going like, to mess up their site live in front of you. So that'd be irresponsible. Ross, so yeah. you log into WordPress, or do you log into Arbor Brewing's uh, site? Uh, good question. So um, Arbor Brewing has their own installation of WordPress. So I, I log into their site that's running WordPress. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yep. Cool. Um, so I get to this page where I see you know, the beer that looks quite delicious. Honey lavender or something or other. Sounds good. I can go up and just click at the top where it says edit beer. It's going to take me to a page where I'll have a nice easy to use interface that has all the different fields um, that you see on the front end, like the description, the history, what food it pairs with, if there's a rate beer address, if there's an untapped address. These are like social networks for beers, which I didn't know existed, uh, but it's awesome. I could choose if I want it to be available in stores, and if so, what months. I can adjust the IP views or all these other different things. So I'll say 114, which is probably very high. I can't see the rest of the screen. Click update, and it'll automatically adjust those things, format them in the nice template we've already created, and that's about it. We didn't have the best with FTP, we didn't have to edit any code. Um, it took about one to two minutes to go ahead and edit this beer. And it's about the same to add an additional beer. Um, and if any of you have actually worked with other content management systems or uh, have created websites from scratch, you know that this is much, much easier. Uh, but there's other really important things, really great things about WordPress, uh, like the community, which I think is, uh, is the reason why WordPress has evolved to the point it is. WordPress has a huge, massive community. There's tons and tons of people who are working on WordPress at any given moment, uh, which means there's a lot of availability. If you have a WordPress site and your current developer isn't working out, uh, you can find another one really easily because there are thousands of them. They're all over the place. In Ann Arbor, I can think of you know 20 different WordPress developers that you can go to and find whoever fits your company best. That means that a lot of people are creating plugins, these little bits of functionality or sometimes huge pieces of functionality that you can install on your website and turn it into something that it wasn't before. In fact, 
As of last night, there were 30,245 free plugins that you could use to change or add functionality to your site. And there's even more premium ones. There's also tons of themes. So themes allow your WordPress site to look different than any other WordPress site, meaning that WordPress doesn't have to look like any one given thing. And we'll look at some examples in a little bit. Um, but currently, there's almost 2,500 free themes available on WordPress.org, which is the website for the free version of WordPress. Um, and there's thousands elsewhere, including premium themes, or you can even build your own theme from scratch. I mean, if you want it to look a very particular way, you can create your own design and create your own custom theme. And a lot of times, um, when I talk about WordPress and open source, um, some people ask me, like, why, why do people even bother with open source? Why do they contribute to open source? How does it benefit anybody? How does it benefit me if I'm creating things and releasing them for free? Well, my mom would say, like, hey, it's, it's nice. You're creating, contributing to a greater cause. You're all banding together. You're creating a piece of software that's so good that it can power 22% of the internet or of the web. Um, and that should be good enough. You know, a few blocks away, uh, there, there's a fairly famous business school called the Ross School of Business, which no relation, um, where they're teaching, I think it's approximately 100 students at any given time, that free is not a business model. You can't make money giving away things for free. But I disagree, and open source has proven otherwise. So the company Automatic, which uh, we talked about the creator WordPress and that Mullen wig, um, he, uh, he started Automatic, which is a company that basically provides services for WordPress, um, made $45 million last year. And they only have something like 230 employees. $45 million creating services for a free platform. That's crazy. Um, but a lot of people do it and make money by creating what, what are called premium products. I Meaning you make a free version of the plugin and you create a paid version that's slightly better. And if you like the free one, maybe you're willing to pay 50 bucks for the, um, for the more expensive one. And what's interesting about this is if you create a plugin for WordPress, it's supposed to be open source. Legally, it's supposed to be open source. That's what WordPress wants you to do. That's what most people do. Which means even if, if you pay $50 for my plugin, um, I don't own that plugin that you gave me $50 for. Everybody does. So really what I'm charging for is support and updates. So that's an important distinction about the free products and the paid products from WordPress. Um, some companies pay for customization. So if you have a plugin that does something but it's not quite right, you might hire a company to, to alter that and make a custom theme. Um, so there's really a lot of different ways that you can actually make money using open source technology. So my dad would say that uh, he appreciates the business opportunity that open source creates. You know, the types of websites that we create um, and that a lot of people who use WordPress create would cost so much more than they do now um, if WordPress wasn't around because there's all this free functionality out there. And a lot of our clients wouldn't be able to afford it because before WordPress, a basic CMS, meaning you can edit text and that's it, would cost you twenty dollars to $50,000 and you'd have to spend thousands of dollars every month just to keep it updated and running. Where with WordPress or a lot of these other open source technologies, you might spend somewhere between 1000 to, on the high end, 50000 But That's like the most complex site you can think of. So really, it reduces the price range um, by a massive amount. Um, on the e-commerce side, there's custom solutions out there, like Fry and Talent. They, they charge hundreds of thousands of dollars for an e-commerce site. And that's completely custom built from scratch. Where if you wanted to have an e-commerce site with WordPress, you could get WooCommerce, which is free. You could get Cart66, which is free, or $150 a year for the expensive version, or JigoShop, also free. And if you need custom functionality, you could pay thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands for that as well. Where WordPress has a lot of these, a lot of the, the kind of popular functionality you might need available for free. For example, if you need a members only section, if you're looking for store locations, um, if you need a social networking site, there's a free plugin that'll let you have like a clone of Facebook, your own clone of Facebook. Um, web forums, polls, blog networks, your own product category, custom forums, e-commerce, event listings, Google Maps or directions, or even a mobile site. All this is available for free. It won't cost you a penny. Um, you might have to pay someone to help you configure it, but you know, the comparison of what it would cost to develop it in the first place would be a massive difference. Um, I'm probably out of time, aren't I? Yeah, we're fast time to wrap it up. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so just to show you a couple cool examples, that's really all I had left. Um, there's a lot of really cool websites that are powered by WordPress. I'll just click through them real quick. Uh, Sony Music, pretty big company. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks, for any of you football fans. The uh, official website of Sweden. Or basketball. Or basketball. <laughs> Can you tell them a sports person? <laughs> uh, Quartz, which is a really cool news-based site. Uh, I had no idea. New York Post. Uh, NASA. BBC America. Uh, and then there's some really bad sites part of WordPress, so don't blame WordPress, but Justin Bieber. <laughs> Not so good. William Shatner. Oh. <laughs> Kim Kardashian. <laughs> It's not WordPress's fault. And then even Google is part of WordPress. Really? No. That's <laughs> 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 just <laughs> Yeah, I'm out of time. That's about it. I probably don't have time for questions, but I'll be here for a while if you have questions. Um, so consider open source. Consider WordPress. If you're using WordPress, think about you know what you can do with it based on what I told you. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Let's give a round of applause. So obviously, you can tell that Ross probably has a one-day seminar. That could fill the entire day that he comes in into about 40 minutes. So yeah, we are out of time. So if you do have questions, Ross will stick around, come up and ask them. We've got about 10 minutes, and we're usually pretty good about this. We pass the mic to the whole room. Everybody has an opportunity to introduce themselves, tell us who you are, where you're from. If you have an ask, if you do have an ask or need, please make it as quick as possible. We ask that you stand up so everyone in the room can see you. Uh, if you don't want to, you can pass the mic to the next person if you'd like to go by you. So we'll get started right here with Emily, and we'll move to the room quickly. I'm studying advertising and sales and public relations, and I'm a senior right now, and I'm working on LA from Twitter and Facebook. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ian. I'm an intern at Ingenix Digital Marketing. I'm currently a sophomore at the University of Michigan. Um, my major is Organizational Studies. Hello, my name is John Wright. I am a web developer for Ingenix Digital Marketing. <coughs> Hi, Laura Kirchner. Um, and I had a five accounts at Enjoy. Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Weatherston. I'm a photographer and photo editor at the Pan Magazine. Hi, my name is Rina Caldwell. I'm a content producer and writer for the Pan Magazine based in Britain. Hi, my name is uh, Jim Wolferbeck and I'm with Replay One. We do begin on demand for uh, local sporting events. Hi, I'm Kira McEwen. I'm the Product Management and Marketing Consulting Company. Hi, I'm Josh Botkin. I'm with Inovo. We're the Innovation Consulting Group here in Canada. My name is Jessica Lito. I'm the Marketing Director for Metal Art Builders, a custom home builder and remodeler here in Ann Arbor. And I just wanted to say that we've encountered uh, Ross on 3.7 through LA2M, worked with him for a few years now, and he's done a number of website work for us, and it's phenomenal. I can't say enough about it. Um, hi, I'm Vicki Elmer, and I'm a freelance writer. I actually write for Quartz, the site up there, and I own a small social enterprise in Ann Arbor called Mighty Nice, Joy and Jobs through Italian Ice. I am looking for a few companies in Ann Arbor that would like to make their employees feel mighty sweet and mighty good this summer, so if you want to do some special things for your workers, come see me after. Uh, yes, hello. I'm Monique Deshane. I'm the owner of El Dente Pasta, and we have a WordPress site, and we need to make some improvements, so I'm really happy to be here and learn about it. Hello, I'm Dr. Thomas Blackwell, principal owner of Empire International. We're a marketing and training company for a brand new product that has come out. It's called Excess Energy. If you're looking for a different drink than Bull and the other thing, check us out. I'm Scott Olson. Uh, I run the Pediatric Device Consortium at the University of Michigan. I'm Nick Georgiatis. I'm with Primerica Financial Services. Tim Brisley. I uh, teach individuals what banks, credit card companies, mortgage companies don't want people to know because they put them out of business. <laughs> um, I'm Matt Rudowski. I'm the graphic and web designer at Capital Letters. Hi everybody, I'm Stacy, your local digital print 
from Dollar Bill, your local digital print shop. Um, and Ross, you should get paid by WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Curtis with Handy Manual. We're a uh, remodeling firm here locally. And uh, vote for the millage for the ride. Yeah. My name is Samantha Crosby. I'm with Farm Bureau Insurance. I specialize in workers' compensation and small business startups. Hi, my name is Jordan Beecham. I do uh, marketing and public relations for Dexter Builders. We do anything from Handy Manual work to designing and building entire homes. I'm Ben Maney, I'm a student at University of Michigan, which is Sambo Design. Hey everybody, I'm Beth Line again from The Ride. Can't tell you how to vote, but I can tell you that it's really important you vote May 6th. I'm not going to front voting when it's not a presidential election. It can be boring and time consuming, but it's really important you get out there. It's in 34 days. Please go and vote May 6th. Uh, TheRideYourWay.org, a website that's important and maybe should have made, been made with WordPress. Uh, it wasn't, but it should have been. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Bob Ferran, I'm with Bob Ferran Photography, I'm a commercial and advertising photographer. And I'm, I want to announce a new product that I'm going to have. I'm going to be doing low-level aerial photography now, and with remotely piloted, piloted vehicles. So it's going to be a fun little thing. Hi, I'm uh, Mark Isaacson. I'm a computer science student here at the university. I'm John Ryan. I'm also a computer science student here at the university. Very interested in open source projects and what development types out. Hi, I'm Daryl Hawkins. Um, I'm a marketing strategist and uh, freelance problem solver. Hi, my name is Jason Schnabel. I'm uh, new to the Ann Arbor area. Just moved in in January. I'm a graphic designer. Hi, I'm Christy Rawson. I'm a freelance editor. I'm really good at fixing sentences. If you need a pair of eyes on your writing, whether online or a print or anything like that, let me know. Hi, I'm uh, Tom Bobney, owner of uh, Mobile Exhibit Specialists. Hi, I'm Greg Wilson. I'm a freelance digital marketing and public relations person. Hi, I'm Scott Cosi. I'm a web developer at Alpha Genial. I'm big into startups and uh, just like WordPress and uh, programming in general. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Sickles. I'm a marketing manager at Asahi Glass, and I work on advanced um, glass technology. <coughs> Hi, I'm Bud Gibson. I created the Search Marketing Program at Eastern Michigan University, and we are very interested in getting more nonprofit clients. Our students work directly with nonprofits. Uh, we've done some incredible things for them, and uh, so if you have somebody who's looking for some help with their digital marketing, come talk to me. I'm Mitty Matthews. I'm yet another photographer in the room, except I'm doing something completely different. I do virtual tours. Um, manipulating images is my specialty. So I do virtual tours or product designs that you can turn around and use on your web pages. I'm Larry Deck with the Walking Up Bicycling and Walking Coalition. I'm Roger Rail, Roger Rail Virtual Ventures, and I'll be on the panel next uh, Tuesday night. At marketing, uh, it used to be called Marketing Roundtable, now it's called Michigan Marketing Minds at, at Spark. Hi, I'm Tom Crawford. I'm a mobile app developer. I run a business called Movable Bytes. Uh, you should definitely check out uh, Happy Hour Deals. It's an app on iOS and Android. You can find a drink while you're waiting to get around in the crowd today. Uh, so Happy Hour Deals. And also, just a shout out to Ross, who does an awesome job. He's done work for several of my clients. So. Uh, if you need somebody, go check out 3.7 Designs. They do a great job. Hi, I'm Nick Michelle. I'm an urban planner with Beckett Raider, a job that I did not know would include web design, but we put up a WordPress site for every project that we do, so clearly anybody can learn it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dan White, and I'm the marketing assistant at Performance Network Theater. Go see me in the <laughs> Hi, I'm Jordan Pan. I'm the Assistant Technical Director and Graphic Designer at Performance Network just down the street. I'm Marissa. I'm the Marketing and Public Relations Director at Performance Network Theater. Samantha, go ahead. Oh. All right, I'm Samantha Williams. I will not admit that my favorite color combo is green and white. <laughs> green and white. Um, I handle our marketing and content for a B2B company in Livonia who helps our clients specialize in exhibiting at trade shows. <laughs> Um, I also write fiction under a pen name and help authors with their marketing. 
Hi, I'm Jim Gilligan, Chief Yogi at Ecro Yoga Ann Arbor, and uh, just now putting up a web uh, WordPress site, so this is very timely. Thank you, Ross. Lindsay Johnson with 3.7 Designs. Not that I'm much tall, but I have to say. Hi, I'm Nancy Howard, and I'm at Washtenaw Community College. Hi, God. Um, we have a an e marketing series of classes, and this is very timely. Uh, we do offer WordPress training. So if you're looking for structured how to get started, we have both the open source option, which is coming up uh, this month, starts a week from tonight. If you've already used WordPress and understand the interface, it's a great class for you to learn the other one, which is how to get, uh, requires a domain. Um, we have a get started class. I have brochures here that have the full schedule of the classes that we offer. And I also want to thank Ross um, because we have lots of resources and uh, you and Declan are, are a great one that I was just able to go to because we have people that come to our classes to learn how to get started and then we have WordPress Ann Arbor or is it Ann Arbor WordPress? Uh, WordPress Ann Arbor. The meetup group that meets the last Wednesday? Yep. Whatever. Okay. Our classes happen to run on Wednesday so I guess WordPress is all about the W's. <laughs> um, but uh, they have a great, that's a great resource for whatever level. You've got lots of uh, different levels that go in there, so uh, it's, it's a great uh, interface. Come and learn. Hi, I'm uh, Mary Lou with the LA2M, and what a wonderful trip. I'm really glad to see everyone here. Um, and thanks for, thanks for coming out. Um, if you have any questions about sponsorships or would like to suggest a uh, speaker for our group, I'd be happy to talk to you, and I'll be right up. Hi, I'm Carter Sherline from Princeton Studios, and I'm a commercial editorial and portrait photographer. And the images that you're using are based on the group's Facebook page. All right, and I'm Jim Musial. I have a company called 5522 Tech. I help companies with web and mobile development. So, again, please, a quick round of applause for Ross. Do that really quickly, it's 101, so we'll just take another minute and get you out of here. But uh, just a couple other shout outs. Um, we hope you're back here every week. This is a great, uh, as you can tell from today's attendance, we have great speakers here, uh, great information. So hope you come all the time. If you're not able to come, we do stream live on the web. So you can go to uh, the LA2M website and click on the stream live button. Roger Rail over there uh, that introduced himself as a volunteer here. Carter volunteers his time, Stacy volunteers her time, so a lot of us volunteer our time for the organization to keep the keep events like this going.